for Wild TV. Glenn Andreessen here on Saturday morning. I'm with NHL.com draft expert Adam Kimmelman. And Adam, first off, I want to ask you about the Wild's ninth pick yesterday, or first round pick, ninth overall, Michael Granlin out of Finland. What can you tell us about him, and, and was he the right selection for the Minnesota Wild in your opinion? Well, I think the Wild are looking to score, be more scoring, more up-tempo team, and that's what you get from Michael Granlin. Very slick skater, very fast, good hands, good passer, knows how to make his line mates better. Um, Goran Stube, who runs uh, European scouting for NHL Central Scouting, said that uh, everybody he played with, whether it was with his Finnish club team, whether it was the World Under-18 team, the World Junior team, he made those guys far better players. You saw at the World Under-18 with Tamu Polkinen, who he turned in, had uh, 10 goals and 15 points, both tournament highs. Um, another thing that Goran told me was he's not the biggest guy in the world, but no one's told him he's a small guy. He's very feisty, and he's very responsible defensively like a lot of Finnish players. So he'll be he's a good all-zone player, and he's a really good scorer. What sounds most impressive about him is he racked up a lot of offensive points in a league with 29-year-old, 30-year-old guys, you know, professional players in Finland. Does that make him, in your opinion, ready to come into the NHL within a year or two? I think, yeah, he'll probably need another year to get a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger. You know, playing against men in the Finnish Elite League, it's one of the better leagues in Europe. Probably a little bit more advanced than the Canadian Hockey League. I asked him about this. I said, was there ever a thought in your mind to come over? He, and he said, not really. You know, I'm playing against men now. Why would I want to come and play against kids my own age when I can play against older, better competition? So it makes a lot of sense. So, yeah, I think he'll need to come over, spend a little bit of time in the minors just to get used to the North American size of the ice and the speed of the game a little bit, but eventually the, the ceiling on him is very high. Tell me about yesterday. You and every other prognosticator had uh, you know, the, the big three defensemen going real early and really it was just one guy, one defenseman that went and forwards really for the, through the first ten. Were you surprised? Obviously you must have been surprised by this. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised to see Fowler and Gormley slip as low as they did. They were guys that Central Scouting had ranked very high, that we had a very high in our mock drafts on NHL.com, but I talked to Rick Dudley from the Atlanta Thrashers a little bit and he made a very good point. He said it, it got to the point where if you had player X on your board slightly ahead of Fowler or slightly ahead of Gormley, and you didn't maybe didn't think Player X would still be there, well, you got to go with your board, and you take Player X. And that's what they did when they took Burmistrov at number eight, and I, he believes that's probably what a lot of teams did. And it, it, it makes sense, and I'm sure that's kind of what happened. Are there any surprises, uh, any other surprises to you in that first round? Well, I think Ryan Johansson going at number four was a bit of a surprise. Now, granted, in my mock draft, I had him going number six to Tampa, but I, I think you know, they maybe could have traded back and still gotten him and picked up another pick, but that was a bit of a surprise. I thought Nino Niederreiter going at number five, another excellent player, but I thought number five was a little bit earlier than I thought he would go. And Mark Vizentine, the second goalie taken by Phoenix, I thought that was a little bit of a surprise. He went ahead of Calvin Pickard, who is number one on Central Scouting's uh, North American goalie list. Our uh, wild GM, Chuck Fletcher, said he's never seen anything like yesterday's first round in terms of trade activity, the very little trade activity. A lot of talking, he said, but very few trades are made. Were you uh, surprised by that, and uh, what do you think that the reason for that is? Well, I think the reason for it is the depth of the draft. No one wants to take a chance of losing their player. You know, it's a very deep draft, but there is there, every team is kind of locked in on their guy, and they're worried that other people might be locked in on their guy, so everybody's a little gun-shy. Nobody wants to move. The other thing is, if you're going to take, move a pick, they want to send a player with you. So nobody wants to take a contract. If it's a pick for pick, you saw that today, yesterday. I don't know if you'll see that again today. Today you might see teams maybe move some actual players. So it, it's interesting. I know there was a lot of calls. A lot of GMs said they took a lot of calls, but nobody was really motivated to move off their spot because of the depth of the draft. And uh, we're just about to start the second round. Before we go, I want to ask you, are there players that are not off the board yet that uh, you think will go early on in the second year? Well, there's a few players that I'm definitely going to be watching. Uh, John McFarland from the Sudbury Wolves, Tyler Toffoli from the Ottawa 67s, um, Calvin Pickard from the Seattle Thunderbirds, who I mentioned. Um, and then the one I'm really curious about is Kirill Kabanov, the Russian forward who started the year with the Moncton Wildcats. Had a little bit of controversy when he left them during the playoffs for the Russian under-18 team. Got kicked off the Russian under-18 team. He's got, you know, top five talent, but... You know, there's some off-ice issues with him. So I'm curious to see where he goes because the talent is definitely there. 
All right, well, you can follow all of Adam's work on NHL.com through this weekend. And really, you did a great job the, all the months leading up to the draft. So thanks for taking some time out and uh, sharing your wisdom with us. My pleasure. Thanks a lot.